This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to Innovation in Compliance. In this podcast series, I will bring you interviews with some of the leading experts who are changing the way practitioners approach compliance. Although the name compliance is in the title, it's really about innovation. And I wanted to drive the conversation about innovation in compliance into the 2030s and beyond with a focus on innovations for the compliance practitioner and the compliance professional. You want to learn how to bring your business into an innovative state and more innovative business solutions for compliance problems, issues, and concerns. This is the podcast for you. Innovation and Compliance is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. In this episode, I visit with Megan Doherty, co-founder at One Stone Creative and the guiding light of the Podcasting for Business Conference. Megan tells us about the 2023 conference, which will occur November 13 through 15 virtually. This will be a conference I know you'll enjoy, and I know you'll enjoy this episode. Hello, everyone. Tom Fox back again with Megan Doherty to talk about one of our joint most favorite topics, and we got a lot of them, but it's the Podcasting for Business Conference 2023. Megan, for those looking at this video, you can see how excited she is. I'm so excited about it. Last year, it was the first time we ran the Podcasting for Business Conference, and at the end of it, I was just very confident in the fact this is the coolest thing I've ever done. <laughs> and now we get to do it again. So you are correct. I'm extremely excited. It's my and usual it, MO, but I'm pretty excited. <laughs> and it's going to be even cooler this year. Mm -hmm. So can we maybe just jump right into some of the topics that we're going to cover in this event? And when I say <laughs> we, it's because I get to participate too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Just like last year, we've got uh, a really good array of topics that can, people are going to be covering, and they're all really directed towards people who are podcasting in support of an existing business. If you are watching this and you podcast for the love of the game or you podcast as a business, you're still welcome, but it really is for supporting a business that exists. So we've got some topics uh, that are new this year that I'm really excited to talk about. Talk about. One is going to be uh, an interviewing strategy session on how to really effectively translate information from an expert to everyone else. So if you find that you, as a podcast host, are talking to experts and you want to make sure that your audience of lay people or people who don't know as much about the topic can really understand it, this is going to be a super valuable one. And then we've got another one coming up that's all about collaborating with a team. So a lot of people podcasting for business, of course, they've either got a member of their team managing the podcast or they're working with a third party service provider. And there are a lot of different ways to talk about edits, figure out where the where in the process everything is, project manage the whole thing. So we've got a session specifically on collaborating with a remote team about podcasting. And those are just off the top of my head, two examples that I'm really excited about. So... There's one other that I'm very excited about. So what are yeah? What, what are some of the ones you're really excited about? I'm excited about a new session that we talked about earlier this week, and I pitched to you, and you <laughs> accepted it. And it is a different way to think about your podcast reach. Typically, you think about downloads. You might think about people who listen. Mm -hmm. You might think about listeners. You might think about engagement. But it turns out that is just a very small part of your overall podcast reach. And if you properly look at it in a much more holistic way that a business or a, a podcast that is being used by a business can have exponentially more touch points, exponentially more engagement, and exponentially more use. And these are all um, social media tools mm -hmm that are available to you at little or no cost. And so once you begin to understand the power of your reach, you can start to craft and graft a social media marketing strategy beyond simply the subject matter expertise you want to show or whatever it is you're trying to demonstrate with your podcast. And I've been working on this topic uh, for a long time, and I finally got some solid numbers, and I'm thrilled to share this with our audience, because I think it's going to open a lot of eyes and more importantly, get people thinking about a podcast strategy as much more holistic uh, than simply showing yourself as a true subject matter expert. So I'm very excited about that. Some of the podcasts that I am excited about 
anytime Alex Sanfilippo speaks, I'm going to pay to hear it. <laughs> and so he's going to talk to us. We get to hear the always incredible state of business podcasting report, which you will preview. Rough shiny data. Um, <laughs> with the shiny data that you've been working on. We're going to have some great deep dives into, I'm going to call them workshops there, but that really doesn't, I think, fully describe what you've created because you create is really an interactive roundtable. Mm -hmm. And it might be Tom or it might be Megan or it might be another subject matter expert, the titular leader, but really we draw on each other's experiences and you've been great in creating that. So we're going to have several of those. So I'm very excited for those. The There's obviously podcast conferences and other virtual events, but Megan, this is the only one I know that speaks to the business person the podcaster who may dabble in podcasting, it may be a hobby, they may move it like I did to a full-time business, but there's something for everyone in here. And it gives all of us the opportunity on both the creative side and the business side. We really, or you've really got it all. Obviously, I'm very excited as well. Yeah, that's the goal. Because I think one of the problems, and it's not really a problem with, there's lots of great podcasting information out there. There's amazing training, there's amazing events, there's a fantastic community. But a lot of it really is predicated on this is something that you're doing for love, or this is something that you're doing specifically as a business. And for a lot of podcasters, that's just not the reality. You're podcasting, but you also have a whole business to run, or you have a whole day job. And a lot of the information that's provided is assuming that the podcast is a standalone rather than an integrated part of a holistic marketing strategy. And so being able to, get, to gather a bunch of information coming from that premise, I think is going to be really valuable to people. And of course, it's all online because we have day jobs and can't necessarily travel all the time. You're also going to have, I'm going to put myself in this first category, which is successes, because you helped me launch several podcasts. I moved to the podcasting as a business, but you have one guest who has become a tremendous success as a podcaster when running a, a business. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have Marianne Fairmouth talk about her experience. Could you tell the audience a little bit about Marianne and how she has literally blown up her little part of the world with her podcast? Absolutely. And this is such a great example. And I'm so gratified that she's willing to come and share some of her experiences and some of the strategies that she's employed. Because Marianne works in the recruiting space and working with careers, working with big companies, working with job seekers. And her podcast, she started it and has been able to leverage the relationships that she's making for business development and also the content that she's creating that's all reflecting well on her business into national radio syndication. So she's going to be presenting specifically on how careful and strategic guest selection can make a really big difference in the results that you see from your podcast. And this is completely irrespective of what your download numbers are. That's something that I, I really hoping we get into a lot and that a lot of the speakers are going to touch on is that downloads and, and you know, we'll be going into this in, in your workshop and our workshop. Uh, downloads are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to measuring the impact and the value and the reach of a podcast and very often are the least important part. There are so many other ways to figure out what your reach is and to measure your benefit. And Marianne's going to be just a great example of that. And I'm going to take a little credit for that because do. <laughs> uh, I'm the one that talked her into starting her podcast <laughs> and got her over to you to do it. We both had a hand in it, but just hats off to Marianne oh, yeah. for what she's done. Just climbing the, the career podcast, podcast ranks, just up and up and up. It's amazing. Yeah. For those who are thinking about starting a podcast for their business, we're going to have a great story from Marianne and it will show the kinds of things you can do if you utilize the tools that are available to you. But there's also going to be, I'm going to say, Megan, almost some, I don't want to say you have a creator track, but a lot of great information about things like show notes, mm -hmm. Things like how you can leverage the social media platforms, Marianne on guest selection. Mm -hmm. But could you tell us a little bit about some of the creatives and creator types that are going to be talking about things like SEO? Absolutely. Returning fan favorite, Danielle Desir Corbett, is going to be coming back to do uh, a new event type that we have at the conference this year. Her expertise is in, it's in podcasting. She's a podcast marketing consultant. She's a very successful podcaster. But SEO is really one of her superpowers. And so she's going to be, along with two other experts, we've got three Ask the Expert sessions where it's going to be Q&A the entire time for questions about how to apply it to your business, specific use cases that you want to try out, 
issues that you've run into. So we're going to have a lot of really dedicated question and answer time. And uh, podcast SEO, as if you attended last year and were able to see your presentation, can be huge. And we're all making tons of mistakes and leaving tons of low-hanging fruit on the table. So Danielle's presentation is going to be absolutely one to catch. And some of the other creative ones that we're looking at, we've got uh, another call I'm excited about by Jenny Blake, who is doing really interesting things with private podcast feeds to build community as part of her business. And so I'm super excited. She's going to be sharing what she is doing. I'm a member of some of them, full disclosure, and I also help produce. But that's going to be, I think, really valuable for people who do have large audiences and are looking for different ways to engage them. It's going to be a game changer. And let's see, who else have we got on creative? We've got case studies coming from Jennifer Hahn. She's the marketing officer at Osho, which is a podcast host. And she's going to be talking about three or five real life examples of how podcasts have really connected brands with their audiences. And that's going to have some fantastic takeaways for everybody. So your book ending, first of all, what are the dates of the event? <laughs> Some maybe important information. So it's going to be happening on the 13th to the 15th of November this year. And it's all virtual. It's all online. Everything is going to be recorded because you probably have things that are happening during the day, but it's also all happening live virtually. Unlike a lot of conferences where you watch a presentation and then maybe you'll get the chance to talk to the presenter after, every single presentation is going to be followed by live Q&A. So you can either think about the topic and submit questions in advance if you can't be there, or you can be there live and get actual an actual response to an issue that you're having in your business. That's in addition to the specific networking events and the conference Slack that we're going to be putting together. So there's going to be lots of opportunities for connection with the speakers, with other experts, with industry professionals, and with fellow podcasters. And that really leads into the next point I wanted to talk about, which was each day is bookended by engagement and conversation. So could you tell us about the coffee that starts the day and what ends the day? Yeah, so I'm excited about this. this is something new, new that we're trying this year. So I'm very much hoping that it is wildly appreciated and utilized. But every day we're going to start before getting into the sessions, the content portion of the day, just with a little chance to go around the table, introduce yourself, who you're talking about. And we're going to have uh, little guests, not little guests, we're going to have guest experts giving little lessons on their area of expertise and then go into breakout rooms to practice the skills right at that time. So I can spill the beans on one of them. I just confirmed Angie Trueblood, speaker last year, owner of the Podwise Group, expert on guest pitching, is going to be giving a, we'll have a little conversation between she and I, and then everyone in the welcome session is going to get a chance to go and practice and go talk about what has just been learned. So hopefully a little skill building and a chance to get to know some other attendees of the event. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to have something like that every morning of the three days. And then in the afternoon, we have three different types of bigger networking events. So the first one is just podcast speed networking. And you're going to show up, you'll be put into a room with someone else, you'll get to know each other, and then boom, you're going to go to another one. So hopefully it'll be a chance to meet um, a whole variety of other people, industry professionals or fellow podcasters, and make connections that you can use. On day two, we're going to have a networking group similar, but with longer time to chat with people rather than rushing from person to person for current and future podcasters. So these are people, if you are podcasting, if you're pod curious, this is going to be the networking event for you to go to meet other people who are in the same situation, who are podcasting for their businesses. And on the final day, we're going to have an industry professionals networking. And so that's for people who are providing the services, providing the tech, working on the tools, uh, just a chance to get together and talk shop, uh, which is all really fun and which... We all do ad nauseum when we get together. So hopefully we'll create some space for that and it'll be a lot of fun. Those are going to be great. Uh, I really like the way you bookended each day. The is How does someone register? They can just go to pfcon.com. Tickets are available and we've got two kinds. It's all access, which gets you, you can attend everything. Or if you know that you're not going to be able to attend live, you can just buy the recordings and it's completely fine. You can still submit questions and get real answers. And I know the answer to this, but... Tell the audience the fabulous deliverable they're going to get after your presentation of the 2023 State of Business <laughs> Podcasting session. You're going to get a copy of the entire report and my team's detailed analysis of it and how to apply the latest um, data about best practices for podcasting for business for your, uh, for your own podcast. Every year, we've done this since 2020, we look at the top 100 business podcasts and we evaluate them on between 50 and 70 different criteria to really establish what are the best practices for social media, for episode length, for cover art. We put all that together into a report and talk about how you can use it. 
Ed, I, I give a lot of talks to local businessmen and small groups about the power of podcasting for business, and I use that report as the basis of my talk. It's a fabulous resource. It will give you, the podcaster or the business owner, real solid data about what works or more importantly, there's a variety of ways. There's not one thing that works in podcasting. There are multiple things. And Megan's report will detail that from things such as podcast length, cadence, cover art, day to release, time to release. It's just a fascinating fact-filled, data-filled report that you can use with actionable insight that she and her team provides. I'm obviously <laughs> looking forward to it. I like it. It is the second coolest thing that I do every year. I really like having it because it's important to make decisions that are appropriate for your business and for your podcast, but sometimes you just want to know what's the right thing to do. And it's really nice to be able to go, oh, how long should my episodes be? You know, just I'm not 44 minutes. It's 44 minutes. That's how long they are. <laughs> and it's nice to have that kind of thing to fall back on in terms of best practice. They're really at least that I have found there hasn't been a really good benchmark for what are these business podcasts doing and what is best practice. So you can always do what is best for you, but it's nice to know what the rest of the kids are doing too. Right. So we're going to link to all of what Megan's talked about in the show notes. I really hope you will join us uh, for some or all of this event. I'm thrilled to be a part of it again. And once again, Megan, thanks so much for, I don't know how you do it, but uh, thanks so much for doing it. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me here to talk about Tom, uh, talk about it, Tom. I really appreciate it. And uh, before we leave, if someone was just curious or wanted more information, what would be the best place to go or best way to contact you? Uh, go to pfbcon.com. Uh, all of the contact forms go right to my inbox. So that's going to be a really easy way to get in touch with me. Well, Megan, thanks again. I look forward to continuing this conversation. Likewise.